Hi everyone. So it is dessert time. Yay! About time, right? After all these hearty meals and everything, we need a little dessert. So today I am going to make an icebox cake. Uh, icebox cake is actually also known as a no-bake cake from the standpoint. Interesting thing about icebox, um, when you used to actually have ice in your ice box, it was considered a refrigerator. It wasn't until the invention of actual refrigeration, electric refrigeration, that the distinction of ice box and refrigerator was made because not every household had a refrigerator. You may have had just an ice box. So today we're doing an ice box cake. And what we're gonna do for this is we need to have whipping cream, heavy whipping cream. And I have here about four cups of whipping cream because I wanna make sure I have enough cream for this. You have a cup of confectioner's sugar, so powdered sugar. So it's basically a quarter cup of confectioner's sugar to every cup of whipping cream to sweeten that up. We also have, one of my favorite things for this, is we have about two to three tablespoons of spiced rum. Yes, rum. It's gonna be an adult icebox cake, not a child icebox cake. We also then have two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and we have one teaspoon of almond extract. You don't want a lot of almond extract because almond extract is a very strong flavor, so you don't want to overpower it with that. So I am using vanilla wafer cookies. You can use just about any thin cookie of your desire and you can flavor your cream with different things like chocolate if you want to do that. But I want to do the rum side of everything because it is still summer. Fall is not till next week. So we are in the summer phase and I just don't want to bake. So I'm using the vanilla wafers and you have about eight dozen of these depending upon the size of your spring form pan. And we're going to use a nine and a half inch spring form pan that I've lined in parchment paper. Depending on the size of that and the depth, you're gonna need eight rough dozen. You could use six to eight, depending upon your cookie size and everything as well. So we're gonna start, again, as I said, with our whipping cream in a large bowl. Ooh, nice and creamy, love that. So I have actually had my whipping cream sitting in the refrigerator chilling in this glass so it wasn't warm. I also chilled my bowl and I chilled my beaters as well. So I want everything chilled. So then I'm gonna mix in my confectioner's sugar into the whipping cream. And the reason I'm mixing it in versus just starting with the um, beaters and getting at the stiff peaks, partly is because I don't want the powder all over the place. The other is I want it to actually get in there, incorporate a little bit into the mixture as we go. So I'm not worrying too much about it. So that powdered sugar will just dissolve right into your whipping cream. Again, you're just lightly mixing that in. Don't worry about lumps because you are going to be whipping this. So if you have a stand mixer, that is best. I do not have a stand mixer. So I am actually using my handy dandy hand mixer for this. And I started on low. Because again, I don't want it going all over the place. And then I up it. So you want to do this until you get stiff peaks. So this will take quite a few minutes to do. So we're going to come back and you'll see when we have stiff peaks. See you in a little bit. All right, so it has been about five minutes of whipping that. As I mentioned, if you have a stand mixer, that'll be better for that because uh, the whipped cream actually did start to go everywhere a little bit. I had to do a little cleanup, clean up the phone actually for the camera side of this, but you want to get stiff peaks for this. So don't want to overbeat it as well. At this point, you're going to add in your two teaspoons of vanilla extract and your one teaspoon of almond extract. And you're gonna beat that again, but again, do not overbeat. So I'm gonna put this on a low, just to get that incorporated. Oh, the smells. The rum and the vanilla and the almond extract. And the whipped cream itself, just with the powdered sugar. Makes you think of all things good. All right, so that looks good. As you see, stiff, stiff. 
you don't want to overbeat. When I was first learning to bake, I was young, around 10 years old, and um, I wanted to make a chocolate cake. So my mom had a recipe in her old Betty Crocker cookbooks, remember those, for a chocolate cake. And it said, you know, to beat, to cream the butter and sugar and to beat in the eggs and everything behind it. But you know, they never tell you how long to do that and what it should look like, which is why I like these little videos. So <laughs> with that, I actually beat all the air out of the cake. So when I baked it, what was supposed to have been a layer cake, a nice layer cake, came out to about an inch, maybe an inch and a half in height. Um, it was an interesting thing. We didn't have a lot of money, obviously, growing up, um, so we couldn't throw things away and waste it. So we ate it. It was a very dense brownie, essentially, is what it was. Uh, but I learned about overbeating very early at an early age. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a little bit of the whipped cream and the bottom of your nine inch, this is actually nine and a half inch round uh, spring form pan. You're just gonna put a thin layer. This is basically your base. This is gonna help the cookies to stick to everything. Because you're not baking anything. You're not doing any shortening with this. You're not doing any um, sprays or anything because you're gonna eat basically this chilled icebox cake. So I have my thin layer down and you're just gonna take your cookies, in this case wafer cookies, and you're gonna place them all around, making that beautiful design because you want cookies through the whole thing. That's the whole point is cookies and cream. As you're just gonna go around. Now, I actually ended up having to buy two boxes of these vanilla wafers because, well, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, a little persickety when I make stuff. So I wanted all of mine to be perfectly round, no broken ones. So I wanted to make sure I had enough perfectly round cookies to go around and it did take me, I had to go through one box and I had almost enough and then I had to open the other box in order to get what I really wanted out of it. So you're just going around, making your little daisy pattern. Simple enough, kids can help with this as well. This is a great family little thing if, if you have people at home and are bored and don't know what to do for the day just they can help with this part for sure you know you might want to do the blender or excuse me mixer part of it yourself and then once that's done you actually have them do the whipped cream so we have our layer on the bottom and then you're going to take a healthy amount because you got a lot of whipped cream here it's four cups so you're going to take a healthy amount or not so healthy just a generous portion. Let's not say healthy. <laughs> okay. But you're going to take a generous portion of this and layer it over your cookies. Being careful not to lift your cookies up. But you want to get them all covered. Because again, that's the point of this. Is to have something fun. Take it to the edges because you're gonna unmold this later and you wanna make sure that it unmolds correctly. So as you see, I didn't measure how much I'm doing. I'm just doing what covers the cookies plus a little more and then to be able to get it to the edges. Because you're gonna do this and you're gonna build up layers. You're gonna have three to five layers, depending upon the size, again, of your pan, your cookies, how much whipped cream you actually have when you are done with this. So I'm just smoothing that out as I go. Turning my pan, it's easier <laughs> to uh, round, to keep it round if you turn your pan as you go, versus try to do it without it. We got a mound in the middle here, so I just want to smooth that out. You could use an offset spatula if you really wanted to, if you're trying for perfection off of things, but I find just the regular silicone works fine for this. So again, you got it covered, and now I'm starting to feel the weight of this, and you should as well. So again, you're just gonna do this 
for however many layers it takes. And then you're gonna finish with a whipped cream layer, not a cookie cake layer. So your top and final layer should always be whipped cream. You're gonna put this in your refrigerator, hence icebox, depending on what you have, but your refrigerator for six hours or overnight, like eight to 10 hours, but a minimum of six hours, depending upon how cold your refrigerator is, because you want everything to set. Because again, you're gonna unmold it and be able to cut into it and everything as well. So I am going to continue this and I will show you at the end before it goes into the refrigerator, what it looks like. And then I will also show you what topping that I've decided I wanted to have with this icebox cake because of the rum. You can guess maybe what that might be, what goes with rum in a nice tropical way off of things. So we'll see you in a little bit here as I continue to layer in my icebox cake and see you in a little bit. All right, so I finished building the layers. I actually ended up doing three layers in all. So there's three layers of cookies and there's three layers of cream, not counting your base layer on the cream side. So you've got this beautiful cream that's gonna go on here. You're gonna cover this in cling film. And I don't use this too often. So I had to actually dig it out of the back of my uh, pantry. I was hoping I actually had some because I don't tend to use cling film much. But you are gonna cover this in cling film. Don't wanna press against the whipped cream because you don't want it to basically take that off when you take it out of the refrigerator. This is just to protect it while it is in the refrigerator. And then when I take this out six hours from now, which so you'll see me then, is I'm going to top it with some coconut chips that I toasted in the oven. So what I did is I actually got a bag of coconut chips or you can get coconut flakes if you want, whichever works for you, desiccated coconut. And I put this on a sheet pan that I put parchment paper on. I just spread it thinly on top and then I just dusted it lightly with a little bit of sanding sugar, light, very light sugar, because I want to get more sweetness into the coconut than was already in the coconut because this overall is a somewhat sweet, but not overly sweet cake. So I wanted to have a little bit of a sweet topping for that. So I'm gonna put coconut because coconut goes really well with the rum and the vanilla and the almond extract and just all those great vanilla wafers and everything. So it reminds me of a tropical vacation and every all those sides of it. So that's what's gonna go on top. So I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator, six hours. Go do something, do your shopping, do laundry, do whatever you're gonna do for that time frame. Go to a movie. All those things can happen and we'll see you in a little bit and I'll show you what the final product will look like. Take care. All right, everyone. So it has been six hours and this has been sitting in the refrigerator, just biding its time and everything, dreaming about what it's going to become. So I realized when I was watching some of the other video clips of this recipe that I forgot to tell you when to add the rum. We added three tablespoons of rum at the time that we started the whipping of the cream. So after I mixed together the uh, confectioner's sugar and the cream, I then added in the three tablespoons of rum and whipped it at that time. So you can't have a rum cake if you don't have rum. So there's that. So we're gonna see how this will unmold and I hope it will. So in your spring form pan, you will just run your knife around the edge, just to separate it a little bit. And hopefully this will actually stay together and not run. I don't, I don't think it will. It looked like it was right when I took it out of the refrigerator. So whipped cream, we'll eat that later. Okay, so now we test and see. Ah! <laughs> there we go. Get it all the way open. Ooh, <laughs> yes. Okay, so 
I mentioned earlier, topping on this. So I actually, as I mentioned before, I took some coconut chips and you could use desiccated coconut, coconut flakes, whatever you want to do off of that. Put them on a baking sheet uh, with parchment paper underneath it, sprinkled some sugar on top of it and baked it at, it was 375 for about 10 minutes just to get this golden crispiness on and get the sugary. So this is my topping because coconut, rum, vanilla, almond, all those things just sound so good together to me off of this. So you are just decorating. You can put a little bit, you can put a lot. I actually have a lot of coconut here, so if I don't use it, it will make a good snack. I actually have in a bag already some peanuts and raisins and chocolate for a little bit of trail mix. So I can add this to that as well. So you can get two little snackers and desserts out of it. <laughs> Bill's here and he's enjoying that idea. <laughs> All right, so we're going to test this and see how it comes out. You can hear that cracking right through because what happened during this time frame ideally is your cookies have softened so that you can do this. Now we're going to see <laughs> if this works or not. <laughs> This is always the fun part. Getting the first piece out of it, anything is always a challenge, but we will see what this does and how it works. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. So we have here our wonderful layers, three layers of vanilla cookies and the whipped cream. And of course you have to test it because you can't serve to your guests or family anything that you haven't tested because that's the advantage of being the chef for the cook and the family. Uh, you get to have a taste tester. <laughs> Bill's saying he's a taste tester. No. <laughs> he is not the taste tester. I am. <laughs> this is good. This is very good. The rum is very light. It's very subtle. Off of the flavors as well, but you got the whipped cream, you got the cookies, you got the crunch actually from the coconut. So you want that, you want a little bit of crunch, otherwise it's soft on soft. So that is where we have now. So there's an ice box cake that you can make on a hot summer day or any day that you want to do off of that. And you just need about six hours of time for the refrigerator. So that was Meals with Michael. Hope you've enjoyed this and uh, subscribe so you get notifications of when these are coming up next and let your friends know. Have a good day.